My name is uh, Wilbert Lee Ammons. I served in the Field Artillery Battalion, 387th Battery B Artillery Battalion. Where did well, you land? During the, I landed in France. Went to uh, the hard France. Went through France, through Belgium, through Holland, and to Bamberg, Germany. Yeah. Maybe well, France was a, uh, some of it looked beautiful, some of it had been messed up pretty bad. It shelled pretty bad when we got there. And, uh, it looked rugged. Not a nice place to be. What was your job? I was a machine gunner, 50 caliber machine gunner, sir. Well, I can't hardly explain it. It was like I've heard of H-E-L-L, if you know what I'm saying. And, and I think that, that was a picture of it right there. It was rugged. A place you and I wouldn't want to be. Did you have a lot of friends besides you? Uh, well, everybody was your friend when you was in war. Well, it was somewhat better, but Belgium was a, it was a sort of run-down place. But uh, we were just passing through. Did you experience any uh, combat in Belgium? All the way from France to Germany, I experienced combat. Well, to the younger people, it's something that uh, you want to be prepared for when you go. Uh, it's, uh, it's rugged. But looking over my life now, I'm proud of what I did. I mean, I'm not patting on the shoulder for everybody, but I'm proud of the service I rendered in my younger days. Yeah. And to the young people, I, I, I'd counsel them, join the Army. Join the Army. Is that what you tell them? That's what I tell them. I think they get off a life worth living after they came out. A life worth living. Is that what it gave you? That's what it gave me. What kind of lessons do you think? Well, it taught me it taught me how to handle myself among people. Taught me how to uh, it it uh, I say uh, I don't know how you would pronounce this or say this, but to uh, honor elderly people and to be good to my superiors. How are you feeling so far? All right, am I doing all right? You're doing great. I, 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 I'm not used to sitting. Just... No, you're doing a great job. <laughs> what are your favorite memories? My favorite memories yeah. was the way some of the uh, French people treated us. They treated us nice. They were glad to see us come through. And matter of fact, I, I, I think of it often. They would often hold up a V. You know, B, that was the little kids. They would hold up a B, and they would try to offer you something to eat, but they would not, they would not uh, advise us to eat their food over there because, you know. Might not be good. Might right, be, right, right. Might be bad. Were you freeing them? Is that why they were so glad to see you? Uh, we were friendly, yes, sir. We, we never was a... a what I'd call an angry acting mob, you know. We were friendly to everybody we met, tried to be. And I take that for a lesson ever since. I try to meet people, and uh, my, uh, my policy is to leave you laughing, not frowning. If you That's don't mind. Policy. Pardon? That's a good policy. Yes, sir. Not everybody. Not everybody. No. A lot of people, they, they, uh, I say they uh, regretted being in service. They had, you know, young people going to college and so on and so on. You know, they regret to be in service because they wanted to finish their career. And some of them never made it back. God bless them. Well, in, in France, we, uh, I believe we landed there, if my mind serves me right, sometime in September. Uh, it was, it was cool, not cold, but cool, uh, but we made it. Uh, in Belgium, it got colder, I guess. Belgium, it got colder, 
and yes, it did. Uh, that Belgian budge was the coldest place I ever lived. That was, uh, that's on record, I guess. Uh, if somebody would like to see it, uh, it was a, it was a rough place. Did we, you have good warm clothing? No, sir. Well, well you, you didn't know too much about uh, didn't care too much about the weather. Uh, you survived with what you had, and it was uh, well. Could I say we was on the front lines, a hundred and ninety-five consecutive days. We had no chance to uh, change clothes or get heavier clothes or anything like that. You know, we just wore what we had. Yeah. I feel like that would take a toll on a person. It did. It did. It did. I'm not as solid as, of course, I'm a tough old man. Don't let no more food. But I'm not, I'm, I'm not as tough as I should be. What was it like on the front lines? Pardon? What was it like on the front lines? Oh, well, on the front lines, it was rugged. I, I, I hate to talk about some of the stuff, but I, uh, well, I was a machine gunner. And I was leading the spearhead, my group. And uh, I seen a mini one fall right at my feet, and I had to push him aside, you know, and step forward. We did that a many times. It was rugged. Sometimes you felt like just standing there and let them take you. But then after all, the thought would come to you, if I quit, what's going to happen? You know. So you got to keep pushing. you got to keep going. That sounds incredibly brave. Did you feel brave? I felt brave, yes, sir. I felt like... Uh, <laughs> Should I say, David, when he faced Goliath? <laughs> I was not afraid. Uh, no, sir, I was not. Did you have a lot of training and basic training to prepare you for this? We did, yes, sir. Could I describe tell you a little bit about that training? Yeah, well, can you t describe it a bit? Well, uh, uh, I trained, well, when I went into service, they trained you. You know, uh, boys, a lot of them wanted to play football, baseball, volleyball. I was a farmer. I didn't go for none of that kind of stuff. But I did want to be a boxer. And, uh, well, I got to box some. I, matter of fact, I, I trained in the Golden Gloves. And I'm proud of that training. I don't know if I should tell you this or if this should be on the air or not, but uh, we went to some places in Germany that we were not allowed to fire our guns. It was hand-to-hand -hand combat, if you know what I'm saying. I do. And I was proud of what training I had with these. So you had to fight hand-to-hand? -hand. Yes, sir. We did. Certainly did. And I was proud of my training. Were you just out of... This was like people... We, were, we had come into Germany, and they didn't want you to kill their... What, what we say, their next crop coming up. So they would go out with their, you know, and that's what we had to do. We was commanded not to shoot our guns. It was, it was rough. It was rough. Sounds very rough. But we survived. Absolutely. And you, you freed thousands of people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With your bare hands. Absolutely. Absolutely. And not only that, we came to some places we had to swim, you know. I took swimming lessons, and I was proud of that, too, because when I had to dive in that cold water, it didn't freeze me one bit. Not one bit? Not one bit. Where was this, where the water was so cold? Uh, well, in, in, uh, that was there at the Belgian Bulge in Holland, in, in uh, France. So you were part of the Battle of the Bulge? Yes, I was, yes, sir. We was the leader of the Battle of the Bulge. You were the spearhead? Yes, sir. Could you describe that in a little bit? Well, when we got there, we had to, uh, that's the place I was talking about, proud I taught, was taught to swim. Uh, we had to swim across the river to lay our communication, you know, our 
artillery was back behind us. So when we got over, what they did, they they uh, barred a, 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 a what, what they call an amphibious bridge across, and they drove across. Who was they? Our army. Okay. Our 387 field artillery battalion. And by the way, we had a. Would you mind? <laughs> uh, we had a. I'll show you a sign. Uh, they didn't get my cap out there with the Tim Wolf on it. They're out there. I want to show that to him. I want him to get a picture of that. Uh, uh, General Eisenhower used the word. He was our man that, you know, sort of enforced us to go. And his word was, if you excuse the language, nothing in hell can stop the Timberwolf Division. Now, our nation ought to be proud of those boys. They ain't got to be proud of me but them that lost their life over there fighting to give us freedom. The United States owes them something. More than a, a name on the wall, if you please. To be, be frank with you, when we got off there, I had read, or heard it read in the Bible about before the end of time, the blood would be up at the horse's bridle. When we got off that hole, as far as you could see, was blood, blood, blood. And that went through my mind. That we, you know, hearing this thing for good. Not to play, but for good. Yeah. So, uh, it was rough. It was rugged. Sounds rough. Could I say this, please? I feel lucky and I feel blessed to be here today. Old man, 94 years old, still living, still preaching. By the way, I got a call day before yesterday. Good. You know where Hope County is? This is our, our story. I got a, a, a call to go there and preach Sunday, and I plan to go. This Sunday? Yes, sir. What, is, what does freedom mean to you? Well, freedom means to me is, is uh, freedom of speech. We got, we got that, maybe. But uh, we are still not living in the land of the free. We are still under, uh, I'd say, a portion of bondage. We just have so much that we can do or say. Uh, and some of this is not, it's not fair. It's not fair. Does it feel different than when you came home? Pardon? Does this feel different now than from when you came home from the war? What do you mean different? Like freedom, was it feel different now than it did then? Well, I felt, when I came home, I felt like I was, I feel more free now than I did then, if you please. Yeah. Tell us why. Well, the, the, the reason why, I feel we got people today that skilled to take care of us if a war was happening to break out. And uh, I, 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 I tell these young boys and girls, get your training. If the time come, you'll be available. If you don't have the training, you can't fight. You can't fight. We had some of the best training that uh, I think the Army had. I do. I do. We never, well, we actually, we were trained to stay out in the woods or in the field. So when we got over, on the battlefield, that was nothing new to us. Nothing new. You used to eat out in the field. That was nothing new. So. Just being outdoors all the time? Yes, sir. Fighting outdoors? Yes, sir. But always had a, a guard. Always had a guard. What does that mean, you always had a guard? We had a guard. We had somebody, like what okay. time we were, you know, Taking a rest, somebody was on guard, watching over us. I guess like the shepherd, the good shepherd. <laughs> Sounds like it. You went from you went from France all the way into Germany. Did you have friends that made it all the way from France to Germany? We had you friends made it all the way. I got a picture I'd li hanging in the back back there. I'd like. I'd like to show it at this time. If this young man don't go back there, I'm going back and get the one 
Got about two old-looking men in their army outfit, short term shoe, don't mind. I, I like that picture to go on this. Uh, George, yeah, oh, back at the back, at the back, Nadine, at the back of the wall, yeah. You see the house, old house? The two men standing there? That's him. That's him. So they came with you all the way from France to Germany? If you don't mind, can I? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. This is George T. Alford and W.L. Ammons. That was my, one of my best buddies. And that happened to be what we call Germany. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So that, you, we call that Bamberg, Germany. Was that near the end of the war? That was at the end. That's as far as we went. He called surrender right there. What did that feel like when you heard that news? Oh boy, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> felt like felt like the world had lifted off of us. Felt like the world had lifted off of us. Did you have to stay in Germany a long time after that before you came home? Pardon? Did you have to stay in Germany for a while before you came home? Yes, sir. What did you do after the war there? Oh, no, sir. We never stayed in Germany. We, uh, the war ended. We, uh, we stayed where we were, where it ended for maybe a couple of three days. And then we got on a train and came back to France. He's with these soldiers? Well, it was like a family. It was like a family. And matter of fact, it was a family. And, uh... You didn't, uh, you didn't pick on one without the whole group uh, getting on you. No, it was, it was all, it's all the family. So you were all watching out for each other. All watching out for each other. And if we got a, a package from home, we all shared. Did you have any uh, good luck charms? Anything? Uh, well, all, all, all the good luck charge we had was back home, praying for us. Don't know if I could break into this or not, but I'm going to. Uh, we were not allowed to, uh, well, we built our own school, Indians. Yeah, we built our own school, hired our own teachers. Uh, other people was riding buses. We had to take our children, or the children, to school. So uh, I was asked this question. That's a hypothetical question, but it do it do require an answer. Uh, when they called, when I got the news that I had to go and register for the army, I wanted to buy water. Well, uh, one of my dad's favorite friends told him, says he, he'll have to or else. So I went and registered. Every time come, they called me. So I went. And matter of fact, I was the only red skin that was in my outfit, as I knew of. Went in the name of Little Beaver. I don't know. I felt, I felt, I don't know, kicked about, but they all liked me. Seemed like I don't know why. I was hard to get along with, just like I am now. <laughs> hard to get along with. But uh, we finally fell in love, all of us, with each other. And uh, when my callers, you say, come to get on the uh, transportation to go to the service, I felt the worst to be sure. First time I'd ever been out in Sampson County was that day. Honest. That Did they day. take you by boat? Uh, by boat. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we left Clinton by bus. <laughs> we went to Fort Bragg. We left Fort Bragg but it, on a train and went to Camp Adair, Oregon. Wow. Camp Adair, Oregon. That's where we're taking our basic. And got ready to go overseas to take us, I guess that was New Jersey. I guess, and we got on the boat with 14 days going over. Rough. So it was a boat. Rough. <laughs> so 
So where were you going on the boat to France? France. Okay. Do you have memories of being on the boat? Sorry? Do you have memories of being on that boat? I certainly do. Uh, everybody got sick. That boat going up and down, up and down, and I've never been no heavy water like that. I got sick too, and uh, well, we've had to fly beds. Uh, what do you call them? Bunk. Bunk. Yeah, bunk, and mine was about the third one. And uh, the water got so rough that a lot of us got on the floor and lay. We couldn't lay in our beds because, you know, and that's where we slept in the floor. It was rough. Yes, yeah, go to Fiji. Somebody bumping in your plate. If you want to eat, you better eat that too. <laughs> and that is the truth. So help me. Well, I say this: every little community ought to stick together. Ought to stick together. Or to love one another. And we did at one time in this community. We did. We loved and looked after one another. There's a few who do that now, but not everybody. If one got sick, somebody was there around the clock. Uh, if somebody needed help in the field, somebody was there. So we looked after one another. If they needed money, people would take up a love offering, give. Yeah. And I think that's one of the greatest things ever happened to a market today. Friends being friends. Yeah. Showing it rather than it. And I guess that's what you're worried about. The letters. We could write the letters, but they would be open and things that uh, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be open and things that they would be open things that they did not want you to say. They darkened that out, and they read your letter too. So. When you got back home, did people know of you, what you went through in your bravery? Well, I think my wife and my parents did, especially. Yes, sir. I had to tell them. Uh, what did you tell them? Well, I just told them exactly how I felt and what we went through with. Uh, but my wife, my wife never would, uh, never would turn the television on and look at such as that, you know, war pictures. She didn't let hear people talk about it, and wouldn't let me talk about it around children. No. And I think that was a good thing. Well, sometime that night, I, uh, some of these flashes, you know, and. I find myself standing up beside the bed. I find myself standing up beside the bed, you know. Wakes me up and I, I'm up. And then I think about what's taking place and lay back down. It's rough, it's rough, even now. It's rough when, when you think about some of the places of danger you've been in and how, I'm gonna say God brought us to. It's amazing, it is. Yeah, It'll bring tears to your eyes. Yeah, you survived not yeah. just be able to communicate. Uh, well, it is. Yeah, you. Uh, if 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 I had one, just one thing to say to the young people about uh, uh, their parents and how to act when they get in the service, get them somebody that they could take for their father or their brothers and sisters and deal with them. That's the best way. That's the best way. And as far as the letters, I mean, we didn't, uh, I don't know, I guess we, we thought of our parents and it did us good to hear from them. And our girlfriends, you know. But uh, tell you the truth, we weren't worried about them. Why not? Well, it seemed like we, had, they, we felt that they were secure in our marker. Yeah. And that's what we were there for, to keep the enemy from getting to them. That was our main object. Keep your friends and family safe. Yes, sir. Uh, well, 
as it come down to the truth about it, we were taught in our basic training, but they didn't uh, specify a certain day. But they said, we are going to war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> said, we are going to war and prepare yourself for it, you know. And uh, uh, well, we took it for granted any day could be the day. But when we, uh, I mean, we trained for that purpose, you know, going to war and, and uh, being absent from our uh, American friends and all. This was our family now, the Army, our company, the Battery B, 387 Field Artillery. That was my family, you know, and I depended on them taking care of me like I was going to take care of them. So uh, I think I think that would be the ideal thing for children today to realize when you go into combat, you're not alone. There's somebody else with you. Yeah. It's funny how you said at the very beginning they kind of gave you a hard time, and but I'm assuming as you know in war. They probably yeah. didn't give you much of a well. Thing. Well, they did. They went training. They give us. I mean, we went through that training like well. They made us go through like we was in combat. Matter of fact, if you look at my record, at my shooting record, I made expert in everything. Uh, there's uh, rifle, uh, fifty cal caliber machine gun, forty five pistol. I made sharpshooter and all that stuff. You got to know how to shoot. That's your enemy out there. It's your him. Lord, pray it be him and not me. <laughs> artillery division does. Well, artillery division, we had um, uh, what consists of four, uh, we call them, call them houses. It was uh, big cannons, guns, big guns. And they would they could uh, they could zero in a house nine miles from where you were sitting and put a shell in the uh, basement window door. They could do that. They could do it. And, uh, so that was your job. That that was five men's job on each gun. We had four guns and. Uh, my job was for a machine gun. I was to protect them walking soldiers that were slipping up on you. And them machine guns were dangerous. They had, uh, they'd shoot uh, 50 uh, shells a minute. Uh, that's pretty good. Every fifth one was a tracer. You could tell where you were shooting at. That bar was a water cool, or a cool rather. Change your barrel every once in a while to get hot. You gotta change. And, uh, We've been told by other veterans that it seemed like you fight more at night. Is that true? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, it's better at night. You, uh, these old ears can hear sometimes a lot more than these eyes can see, you know. Well, I think they knew what was going on. I think they had been warned of what was going on. But you know, Hitler destroyed a lot of Jews there one time, you know. He was rugged. He was not a pretty picture to see either. Now, anybody loved Hitler, I don't know. I don't believe the Lord even loved him, <laughs> to be honest with you. I mean, he killed people like he did. Yeah. Sit here all day. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. Uh, we we could listen to you talk all day long, well, but we don't want to do that. We've taken enough of your time. Yeah. Well, that's all right. I, I appreciate your time and your efforts and your concern. I want people to know where we stand today. Yeah. And uh, I I don't know about you, but uh, our nation's in critical condition. It is. And if somebody don't take a stand, I don't know what's going to happen. And as a preacher, God deals with his preachers, believe that or not. 
We live in the last days. These are the last days. Uh, sorry to say it, but if somebody don't step up and take over, we're going down. Well, I heard you're going to be chief. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'll lead my braves to the to the limit. You believe that? <laughs> yeah, I do believe that. <laughs> yeah. I'll vote for you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank All you. Right, Matt Damon, you have